Columbia has been um, one of these schools that will be holding the Holt Prize at campus competition. So today we'll talk a little bit more about what the Holt Prize is, what the Holt Prize at Columbia logistics are, what the competition will include, um, some of the next steps if you guys are interested in actually participating in the, the competition, and then we'll go over some questions. So this shouldn't take too long, but experiment with me. So I'd first like to just show a promotional video that Holt put out about, I think it was last September, running up to their last competition. So it kind of gives an idea of what the competition is about and uh, kind of the scope of, of it all. So you can stop and this. The world has some simply huge challenges. some simply huge challenges. I'm sitting here talking to you today when there's billions who don't even know where their next meal is going to come from. There's billions that don't have access to the core necessities of life, like access to clean water, education, food, health care. My generation's got the world into a pretty big mess. My generation is different. Not only are we better connected, better informed, and better resourced than any generation in history, but we're different because we have a desire to change the world. When I started in business 40 years ago, you virtually went to 20 countries. Today, you go to at least 150 countries. How do we help all these people also to a better life? That's a new world. That's a completely new world. The ideas that people come up with here, we haven't seen before because they never had the platform to express their ideas. This is the world's largest idea sourcing platform. The winners of this get $1 million in seed money to make this idea happen. It's as real as it gets. I don't think that there is a distinction between help and business. I think help and business are one and the same. We know that we can live in a better world, therefore we believe we must live in a better world. One thing I didn't see coming was the shift in mindset. They go from wanting to be investment bankers and management consultants to becoming social entrepreneurs. Make that possible possible. That's exactly what all of us are here to do today. Boston Regional 
competition or San Francisco or whatever you might want. So it really helps put you apart from the 10,000 applications to get into that, that pool. So I know this is really probably kind of hard to see, but I just wanted to walk you through the process. So in September, President Clinton announced the topic for this year, which is non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases in urban slums. Um, right now, the applications are open right now, so you can apply up to December 17th, but we have these halt at, at campus competition, so you guys are able to first try to compete here, and if you don't make it into the regional finals from our competition, you can still apply and try to get into just the general finals. Uh, so we will be holding our competition on December 12th uh, at 6 p.m. on campus. The location is still to be announced, but uh, we have a website and there's some flyers up here that will keep you all notified of that. Uh, the regional finals then will take place March 7th and 8th, and that's in Lo London, Boston, as I said. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, there's that incubator in the summertime, so it's an all expenses paid trip for the regional finalists to really beef up their, their, their enterprise idea. <clears throat> then the finals, finalists will come back to New York next September and they'll compete in front of President Clinton and then the winner will be given $1 million to actually start their enterprise. So the topic, the topic in the case this year the challenge is, can we build a social healthcare enterprise that serves the needs of 25 million slum dwellers suffering from chronic diseases by 2019? So these diseases are not passed person to person, but are like cancer, or heart disease, asthma, etc. So the solutions don't have to be a health-based solution. They just need to be scalable social um, enterprises. And they could look at the access to healthcare or technology or the education of people to understand what health changes they should be making or could be policies. So this is uh, from their case information. It kind of shows the pain points of slum dwellers and do they understand what makes them sick? How can they trust that they're getting the right health care? How can they pay for it when they really only have $5 a day? And then where can they find help if they need it? So, they, um, Pulse has published a lot of background information that you all should take a look at. It kind of gives you an idea of what the problem really is. And it'll start you to think about what enterprises could potentially address these issues. So here are just some additional uh, facts from that same document. So 100 million people fall into poverty each year because they can't make medical payments, or a billion people worldwide live in these slums. 63% of deaths um, are due to these non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, etc. And a lot of these can be entirely prevented just by changes in lifestyle. And again, it's very expensive. The healthcare costs uh, globally are over 50% due just to these non-communicable diseases. And in developing countries, medicine and healthcare is much more expensive than in developed countries. This again, I know it's really hard to see. We'll make the PowerPoint available to everybody. But these are some questions you all can be asking yourself when you're developing an idea. You kind of look at what you'd be affecting. Are you increasing the awareness of the diseases or what people can, how they can change or opening accessibility, etc.? You can take a look through this. Um, our competition format. So this, I was just talking about what type of topics we will be looking for. But when we're posting this on December 12th, you will have just three minutes, I know that sounds really short, but you'll have three minutes to pitch your idea to the panel of judges. Uh, these judges they will have two minutes to kind of ask you a few more questions about your topic. After the presentations, the judges will bring back three groups that they think maybe have the most solid idea, and then ask some more probing questions. After this second round, the judges deliberate and then a winner will be assigned. And so that winner will then be able to choose where they want to compete, whether it's Boston or San Francisco. Uh, the students, unfortunately, they have to pay their way to get to the regional finals, so there might be some funding available through Columbia or one of your schools or whatever it might be, but to get to the regional finals, you do have to pay your way. And then after that, also pay for all the regional <coughs> finals to do the incubator and then also get to the global final next fall. 
<clears throat> so we set up a Eventbrite website. Um, we're only taking 15 teams, so if you are interested, I would recommend going on this and filling out, um, or filling your team information as soon as possible. We'll also be closing this on December 5th. So that's holtprizecolumbia.eventbrite.com. <clears throat> so that is where you would register for your team. And so now I'm just going to go over a few frequently asked questions and then open up for any questions you guys might have. So can individuals compete? Yes, for the at Hulk Prize competition you can, but once you once if you do go into the regional competition, you have to have a group of at least four and up to five students. Um, where uh, which regional final will the winner be placed? Again, I've talked about that a few times. You can choose where you want to go. So if you have funding that will get you to Dubai, that's that would be great. Um, what if my team does not win or was unable to participate in the Hulk Prize at Columbia competition? Can you still compete? Yes, you're encouraged to apply through the general application on HulkPrize.org. Um, they told us that the regional competitions are really limited to just one school participating per region. So if you want to really, if you're really serious about this, I would recommend applying for San Francisco or maybe London if the winning team goes to Boston. So just to increase your chances. Who covers the travel costs? Again, this was discussed. The students are expected to cover any travel costs associated with participating in the regional final. And then the HALT will help from there on out. Okay, so do you guys have any questions? And Shubra and Lisa, I'm like, I'm up here to help me field anything that you might have. So actually, we've reached out to a few persons to judge. We have one confirmed judge so far, and it's Jeffrey Field from the Business School. Um, he's actually their social enterprise professor. Um, other judges that we've reached out to, I don't want to call any names, like I said, because we don't have anything confirmed as yet, but we've looked at people in the corporate social responsibility department at Morgan Stanley, um, a New York Times journalist who focuses on health, um, and then we're going to be having as Charlotte mentioned earlier, we're from the Master's of Scientists in Sustainability Management Program, so we're reaching out to one of our professors definitely as well, and probably a healthcare person. So it's a panel of five. They do well. It's a 
statement of purpose if you're registering through the qualifieds.org website. So it's, you have to do your resumes, your team information, and uh, 500 word, I think it is, statement of purpose for your, your team. But are you asking about Eventbrite? I mean both. But, oh, yeah. Okay. For Eventbrite, just your team information. So it's essentially first come, first serve basis. Exactly. It's, it's not like a screening of the idea. Can we look at last year's uh, winner? Yeah, do you want to see the video? Will a runner-up be chosen on December 12th in case the winning team can't participate and can't pay their way, as you said? I think that's a really good question. We haven't actually discussed that, so that's something that we will we'll discuss further and we'll see what we can say. Yes? Um, so I'm not saying that you don't have to you know, make any question to who your suppliers and distributors are. I mean, you don't have to name uh, names, but you should have a very solid idea and something that's doable and something 
something that's feasible, not something that is so hypothetical that it could not be put to scale. So you don't have to like have the solar back No, I don't think so. It's it's an idea. It should be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Great. Well hopefully everyone uh, put their email address and information on the sign up sheet. So we'll make sure that you guys informed of everything and contacting us. Yeah, so if you want to pick up this information, we also have like a little flyer so that is the information of the event price, right? Would you be willing to say Yeah, we can use Yeah, it's yours, yeah. You can mail it to all of us. So if you didn't sign in, just be sure to sign in before you leave. And if you didn't get the Nine Health Flyer, just sign in with us for a copy of the Nine Health Flyer.